Hey guys, this is BDB back again with some Circle Jerk Tour games. Um, today I'm gonna be facing Tony. I, I'm not uploading the fourth and fifth game as uh, the fourth game wasn't really that good and it was against my good buddy Easy. But uh, yeah, the game wasn't that good because he misplaced like throughout and it wasn't that entertaining to watch. And uh, the fifth game was like one of my favorite battles of all time. Because it was just hyper offense versus hyper offense, and it'll be linked below in the description because Dockerich already got that live. Um, but yeah, today I'm gonna be facing Tony, who's my sixth opponent, and I'm currently 5 0. So I'll obviously be trying to get a win here so I can, like, yeah, be 6 0. And hopefully make, sh make sure that our team, like, moves forward. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can, like, Win the entire thing. Uh, if like if I win, then we need like I need then the team will need like two more people to win this. So yeah. So uh, when I like uh, initially heard about Tony uh, for my prep, uh, I heard that he was a YouTuber. So I thought I could scout him well, but uh, last video he uploaded was like nine months ago. So I couldn't get much information from that. But uh, you know our real nigga Dockridge, he always like gets me good replays and he was able to get me a nice replay of uh, yeah he got me a couple of replays that uh, one was Tony in SPL and uh, one was uh, Tony versus Empo in OUPL or something so I I saw uh, from these two replays which I saw I could like uh, gauge from those two replays that he's a pretty aggressive player uh, just like me and um, The thing which I saw about him was he used a scissor in both the games, so I anticipated him to bring a scissor in the game and Yeah, so I wanted to build around uh, HP fire Medi mega metagross because I thought he would he might bring a mega scissor again And I didn't anticipate him to bring a stall. So yeah, I made I'm, this this team is like pretty stall weak um I had initially specs Lele, Lele over Ductrio, but just just in case he decided to bring some um, stall or something, some bit something fat. I just wanted to trap the chance here, the Toxapex with Ductrio. So uh, I added a ground Z Ductrio with the ch choice specs Lele, but uh, since he br brought this uh, TDK balance, uh, which I didn't know again at the time, I didn't know this was an RMT like uh, the previous games, but. After I like showed this game to Doc, he told me that uh, this is an RMT. Uh, so yeah, so I wasn't like yeah. sure. About this. Yeah, this is a sample team, I guess. Yeah, this is not an RMT. This is a sample team. Um, so yeah, um, I could have just like um, known the sets already, but um, anyways, it makes the more game more interesting that I didn't know the sets. So yeah, that's that's something I guess. And yeah, I've already told you guys before that it's like more fun to play just by not knowing the sets because the randomness factor is still in the game, so it's pretty entertaining. So I have a Scarf Curlio because yeah, Scarf Curlio is good in this meta. I think I have a Rocky Helmet Lando, oh, uh, AV Tang, and a Zapdos. And a Z I mainly have Zapdos. Uh, it's uh, Wall Switch. Heatwave, Defog, Roost. Uh, I probably should not have carried Defog and I should have just carried HPIs, but in case he does, because I know he's an aggressive player and in case he decided to bring something like Sticky Webs, I did not want to lose straight out, so I had Defog on it. Uh, yeah, so that's like, that's that's basically my team, and uh, it was basically built around me HP Fire Mega Metagross, and I had uh, Choice Picks, Lele, or Ductrio. But uh, just in case he decides to bring something fat, um, I just I just got the Doctrion in, and I have no me good Mega Metagross switchings as well. So, uh, so if I had Doctrio, uh, and if I got off a World Switch on Mega Mega Metagross, or if I got off a U Turn, or if I just brought brought in the Doctrion on a Mega Mega Metagross in case he decided to bring it, I could like uh, Z ground Z ground that uh, like Z Earthquake that and knock it on in a hit. So, yeah. That was basically the plan, and I look at his team composition, and I'm like, uh, he might probably decide to re lead with something uh, that gives him aggression straight on turn one, or something that is going to give him momentum, like the Scissor or uh, Zapdos. 
So I just decided to lead with my Keldeo as he leads with his Scizor. And uh, yeah, here the Among Us is like pretty free here. So I decided to double out into my Landris. And uh, he goes on to his Among Us. And I don't need the Landris for anything. So I want to like let this go to let this uh, Landris go to bed. So I just go for the ro uh, rocks here. No, no, no. I, I, yeah, I go for the rocks here, right? So, and and um, I double out here into my own Zapdos because I know I can take uh, two HP Isis with ease, and I can just roost it off. And if he's like offensive, um, a Zapdos, I didn't want my Landris to get knocked out. So yeah, pretty straightforward plays there. And here he goes out in his scissor, and I just heat wave here because. Um, uh, he because usually if I'm a because he might like stay in or because he's so aggressive and he might just U turn and if I like HP eyes on the Mega Scissor I lose momentum but I don't even have HP eyes because I already told you guys I'm defog. Um yeah so here I go for the heat wave and I, I obviously don't want to uh, like fodder my sleep fodder my Zapdos here so yeah I just go for the world switch here and I uh, go out into my Tang Growth. As he goes for the toxic, so um, this is a toxic spore among us uh, with Giga Drain and uh, HP Fire, I guess. So yeah, so that that was a set which I initially didn't know. So toxic and among us like uh, threw me back because that was like unexpected for me. So uh, here I just decided to go for the uh, knockoff, I guess. Uh, as he goes out with his scissor and. Uh, I lose some momentum there, but I thought he might stay in and go for the sludge bomb there. And if getting rid of Among Us, uh, Black Sludge might be huge for my team because, like, if I can weaken the Among Us, uh, and if I can get off his Carl Burn on the Among Us with Keldeo, then his, his team is, like, pretty significantly weaker to my Keldeo. So, yeah, that was a game plan going into it, but he just switches on his scissor, so I lose some momentum there, but uh, that's not a problem because I can just go back into my Landers here. As he... Uh, ops to keep momentum. Uh, no, he no no he goes for the roost here. So yeah, I just go for the EQ here as he does not defog, but he goes for the U turn, uh, opting to keep momentum or in case I went for the SD or something like that. So he goes out in his uh, Greninja here and his Greninja here basically has a free Hydro Pump or a U turn or uh, or a free Dark Pulse because Tang Root is like. A switch in, but since it's toxic, I really don't want to risk my tank growth at this point. So I just go out into my Keldeo as he goes for the Dark Pulse, I believe. Yeah, he goes for the Dark Pulse here. So, um, okay. So this is like one of the two crucial things that happens in this game. So, uh, he since he goes for the Dark Pulse here, and I know he's not going to stay in. Like, I'm pretty sh confident he's not going to stay in because he has like three switch ins to this. And... I can easily go into my Mega Metagross to get like lots of momentum on most things. Like if he go if he decides to go out in the Among Us, I can like go out into my Mega Metagross and uh, possibly bluff a Zen Headbutt. Though I don't think I have Zen Headbutt. My set is basically uh, EQ, HP Fire, uh, Ice Punch, and Meteor Mash. Uh, so yeah. So. Uh, so I can like double I think I should double out but I think of this move for like a few few seconds but from from like the watching the replays and how from the style he plays he likes to double around a lot and he's like overly ag aggressive like uh, me so I think yeah I, I understand he might stay in here so I just go for the secret so straight up and he does decide to stay in and I catch him on the secret sword and Greninja is gone so this is huge because the moment the this was an even matchup at the start, um, though I think he had like he, though I think he was favored in the matchup, but I'm not really sure. But it was like um, more or less even. But this play over here uh, cost him almost the entire game so, because Greninja was like so good with um, uh, Tang Growth Toxic, and Keldeo is easily like uh, can Keldeo can be easily weakened down, but this play was an unnecessary, unnecessary risk, but if it worked out for him, he would have just won the game straight out. So, yeah. So, yeah. Here in the chat, I just say I almost clicked something else. Haha, <laughs> lol. But, uh, yeah, because I almost clicked something else because the switch out was, like, pretty obvious, but 
yeah, that was a that was a pretty game deciding turn. So yeah, so the game should continue on. So let's see. And so what happens? So he goes on into this um, Mew here, and I obviously should switch on into something. This Mew is really annoying to my team, and this is my wish. I got like Taku Lele because I could just Moonblast to his team, and uh, like if he goes on his Among Us, I could have just click Shar uh, Psychic on one of those turns, and yeah, something like that. Or I could even use Life Orb Lele, but yeah, I decided to bring Ductrio for some reason, which is like not so good against his team. So. Here I decided to switch out, but I have no switch-ins to Mew, so I uh, I decided to like uh, go into my Tangrowth so that hopefully I can get off a knockoff or something. He just goes for the rocks there, and uh, I think I click knockoff here again, or yeah, I click knockoff here again and get rid of the Among Us Black Sludge. That is like that is like some progress. I need to like break down his balls, that is Among Us and Mew somehow, so that I can like uh, win this. So he goes for the HP fire here as I got in my Landris and I go for the U-turn here hoping he would like, uh, yeah, click Spore or something. I actually anticipated him to not stay in uh, because if I EQ'd there, his Among Us would have been significantly lower than it has to be. And if I like uh, bring in the Kelio anytime then and get off a Skull Burn, uh, this Among Us would be basically useless, but he does he decides to stay in here. So, yeah, that w that basically works out for him. So that's fine, I guess, for him. So yeah, he here I go under my uh, tank growth and I click um, uh, HP eyes, I believe. Uh, yeah, I click HP eyes here because th I predict the Zapdos and I click HP eyes here. So that that works out well for me. And here I just go under my own Zapdos because I know I can take. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's gonna go for the heat wave or he's gonna go for the roost here. I definitely didn't uh, predict him to HP eyes there, um, as he does go for the roost, so that's that's good uh, because I can like heal up my own Zapdos, and he goes for the discharge here, showing that and it does forty. That shows that he's like an offensive Zapdos variant. It's mostly it's I think it's mostly like a uh, timid max speed and max special attack. So here I just uh, here here it's a fifty fifty, like uh, I want a wall switch on the turn. Where I predict him to switch, so that's what I'm. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. So I thought he might go for the discharge once again, and uh, hence I decided to uh, roost there. But I lose the 50-50 as he straight goes out into Amoongus. But uh, that's not a huge loss for me. Like it, it's just a small 50-50 loss. Like it's not a big. It's not a big deal. I can just like go into something else. But if I wall switch on that turn, then the game would have been pretty much over. And uh, yeah, so uh, I go for the wall switch here, anyways. And uh, I got into my uh, Landers, hoping he would uh, spore so that I could like sleep for my Landers because Landers is doing nothing this game as he just goes for the toxics. Um, so that's whatever. So I think I click uh, U turn again as he decides to stay in again, uh, knowing that I wouldn't like click Earthquake because when he has his Zapdos. And yeah, that, that's a good play by him. And I go for the U-turn into my tank growth again as he decide, as he decides to click Giga Drain. So, yeah, that's fine. Now, now I just decide to like go down to my Zapdos here. And he goes out into his uh, Scizor. Uh, and I get that prediction right because uh, I went out into my Zapdos predicting the Scizor, which, was, which, which works out very well for me. So I think I definitely don't think he's going to stay in here, but... Um, I don't want to take any chances, so I think I go for the heat wave, and yeah, this is the second crucial part of this game, and this is like, yeah, this is like basically the end of the game because I go for the heat wave here and I get this burn. This is like pretty huge here, and I really apologize, uh, like I'm really sorry for this, but yeah, that that burn like really sucks for him, and yeah, it just it just changes the like it, it like. I'm pretty sure I could have still won because uh, if his if his Garchomp didn't get burned, then I wouldn't have sacked the Landris. I would have like uh, kept it, and I would have like trapped the Garchomp with the uh, Ductrio, and I'm Ground Z Ductrio. But it didn't change the uh, it didn't change the outcome of the game, but it definitely sucks for my opponent, and I I I'm like sorry for it again. But yeah, that's the game we play, and that's unfortunate. So 
yeah and one more thing about this is like i don't like hacking people in a tour like i don't want hacks to be uh, hacks to qualify as a factor in my games i don't want my opponent to hack him and i definitely don't want me uh, myself to hack my opponent because that's like annoying and yeah so yeah that that's that's basically what happens here and i get a burn which is unfortunate and pretty much seals the game and uh, so here i anticipate him to like uh go into his among us and wall switch yeah i just stay in and i click wall switch here because a burnt garchomp is not doing anything to a zapdos and i definitely think he's going to switch out here so i just click wall switch here as he goes out of the among us and i just trap the among us with uh, doctor and kill it with the knock earthquake so here he goes out of his zapdos and the important thing here is I do have toxic on my Ductrio. And I could go for the toxic here, but if he HP ices and knocks my Ductrio out, then I'm not in a I'm not in a good position. So like since I already know his Garchomp is burned, I can definitely afford to like uh let my Landris go down. Because Landris is not going to be doing anything much in this game. If I would not have gotten the burned, I would have probably like sacked my Tangrowth because Tangrowth isn't doing anything in this game as well. and yeah i would have continued from there but since since the garchomp is burn, burned and it's not going to be doing anything this game i just decided to sack off my landris so here he's like at 82% health and i know he's like um, offensive so i go into my metagross and click ice punch here i believe as he goes on his mew uh, yeah he goes on his mew here so uh, here i obviously have to switch out i i expect the roost here and i go into my zapdos as he go, does goes for, he goes for the soft boy here so yeah soft boy do same thing and he goes for the psychic as i just roost up and since i since i know he's faster i want my slower wall switch off here so i just click wall switch here as he goes under the guard chump so yeah uh i i think he's got, because i don't know this is a sample team and because i didn't know the team well i i, I thought he was trying to pivot around uh his guard chump uh like he's going to go guard chump first bait the hp ice or something and guard into like uh probably the his own zardo so that he can get over roost and he can like start to gain gain some momentum at least but it turns out that the scarf chump has toxic uh yeah and it toxics me as i go for the wall switch which is like um uh, kind of annoying but uh, not really but yeah So that's my that, that's like if I knew the team I wouldn't have done that play but yeah whatever I told you guys it's going to be more entertaining if I don't know the team than if I know the team and like how to play around it so yeah so he toxics my zapdos which is like uh, unfortunate and yeah I I just click wall switch again here because I know he's not staying in again and this time I do catch the mio and the switch in and this mew is going to be a real pain in the butt so especially because my zapdos is now toxic um so i got into my ductrio here and now it's like now it's like the game deciding turn over here uh like the final game deciding turn over here here he's not yet shown the willowis here but i am pretty sure he might he has the willowis because no mew is no mew runs a set without willowis other than if you're like nasty plot but he's already shown rocks on the set and he's shown psychic i'm pretty sure he's going to have lovisp uh, along as his last move or he, like a lot of setup sweepers could just set up and like sweep through his team so it makes a lot of sense to him for him to have lovisp and i definitely don't anticipate him to go for the psychic here so here i go for the substitute and he goes for the lovisp as i do, do catch that wonderfully well and Uh, that's basically the final uh, bite in the coffin a uh, final nail in the coffin i mean and even if he like went for the psychic there i didn't lose anything so substitute was, was my all around best play because if i just got off a toxic on this mew i won unless i miss, miss toxic i don't say, i i could not have like lost this game ever so yeah so i get out a substitute here and i go for the toxic and uh the synchronize goes to my substitute which i actually didn't know at that point but i'm glad i got to know here what i could have done was go for the substitute again and like garden off a little more toxic uh stalling going on but i just decided to go for the ground z earthquake straight up 
and yeah the tectonic range hits the mu really hard it does 50 60 the mu and after leftovers and toxic it's like at around 16 percent health so it's not going to be doing much this game uh, i mean the mu is basically dead so i just go in on my metagross to like finish this game off uh here i click ice punch not just uh, not wanting to risk a meteor mash miss and here he goes on his scissor like uh thinking i don't have the hp fire or like um, even if I don't have the HP fire, Hammeram is a roll, and I think he's like heavily defense invested. I'm not really sure, uh, but if he like, if I like don't get the ro roll or something, he still might have a shot. But yeah, it's still yeah. I mean, I could have still won if I didn't have HP fire here, but yeah, he just uh, goes for the roost here, I believe. But I go for the HP fire. I do catch the scissor. This is like the one thing I want to do the entire game because this is the. Like, I built this theme around HP Fire Metagross, and uh, yeah, it shows what it does. And um, here, the Zapdos comes out, and I just Ice Punch it, and it dies. And Garchomp comes out, and I just Ice Punch that too, I guess. Yeah. Um, just, just watch this. And uh, I just click Ice Punch, and yeah, the Garchomp drops. So that's that's basically my sixth game. And, I, and I'm 6-0. In Circle Jerk, I'm like uh, happy that I could perform that well, but I would have been even happier if my team could make it. Unfortunately, my team didn't make it, and this is the quarterfinals, and uh, we are out of the quarterfinals, but I think Tony's team made it, so congrats to them on making it to the semis. Uh, but I'm not sure if they made it to the finals. I don't think they did. Yeah, I'm sure they did. They, I, I'm, I don't think they did. But they made it to the semis. They beat us, like, 3-2. Uh, me and Colin uh, picked up the wins, and Colin also Colin has a good win loss of five one, I guess, and Peckhart has a win loss of like uh, three no yeah three three, and Tesso has a win loss of like uh, four two or something, and ADF test went zero and four, uh, like all she had to do was win this one game for us so that we could like move on to the semis, and like. On, like honestly in the previous two games uh, we didn't even we won all three games like all three of us just won all three games and we didn't even let her have to make her have to play but uh, that's unfortunate I guess uh, so it's like whatever uh, it's annoying when a teammate like doesn't listen or just brings random stuff and goes 0-4 but whatever uh, I'm, I'm like still glad I was like initially when I joined this tour I wasn't really interested in playing or anything like that uh, I was just memeing I was wanted to meme or something but then I was like I met my teammates and they were like okay all cool types and I, only Colin was the only one I knew and I knew ADF test and then here I met Paycard and Tesso were like pretty cool so I'm like okay so we have a cool team so let's just win this but yeah, I, I'm like happy with my overall team's performance and yeah, except like, except one, I thought who could have done much, much better and yeah, so the, we are out of this circle jerk tour, but I had a good run of 6-0, and so probably I'll be looking next forward towards World Cup and I'll be probably playing for Team Asia, so I'll be looking to perform well over there. And yeah, hopefully I can go undefeated there as well. So this is this is the final sixth game of Circle Jerk. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this series and stay tuned for more Doctorage videos. All right, guys, peace.